you so 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 much for tuning in and watching the show is especially for the great tens and we're doing a geography population indicators because it's the third term and third term is mostly about like population like yeah those those dynamics you know so yeah we're going to be doing that and the content that we're going to be doing for today is from this book <laughs> This one, it is the Cambridge Study and Master Study Guide, Grade 10, for yeah, Geography. I really, 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 really like this book because there's like digital learning resources. So you can always go um, on your laptop or your tablet and get more um, summaries, you get tests, you get more, like, it's just so much better for like understanding. So if you don't have this book, I would like really recommend that you get it. So yeah, and I'd really like to say thank you so much for Ca like to Cambridge to sending me this book. Really appreciate it. So yeah, oh, <laughs> and I have bookmarked it with this because there is a certain diagram that we will be using. So yeah, let's get started. Let me just put it away. Oh, and yeah, they're using a leaf blower outside. So if you do hear a sound, don't, don't like, you know, try to ignore it, it's the leaf blower. So yeah, okay, let's get started. We're first gonna start off with like, definitions. Like for example, cause this whole, whole topic, or well, whole section is about basically population distribution. And simply population distribution is just where people are. It, it refers to where people live. That's my own personal definition, don't quote me on it, but that's just how I understand it. So yeah, people, like, there's a reason why people live at certain areas, like, yeah. So I'm just gonna get that diagram. <laughs> Here, so as you can see on this diagram, there's a place that's like really, really dark with like a lot of dots, right? That's where most of the people live. And though that, that region has a name, it's called Ecumene areas. And the reason why people live there is because those areas have, are flat and they've got um, fertile soils and there's just a lot of water available. So that's why a lot of people chose to live there. Yeah, I'm so sorry for like moving. <laughs> If you can't see it, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's why a lot of people chose to live there. So like back then, it was easier for farming because the soil, the soils are fertile. There's a lot of water available. So that's why most of the people live there. And then as you move away from those areas, there's those areas that aren't as um, densely populated. You call those non-ecumene areas. And there, the climate is harsh. Like for example, in Greenland, here there's legit one dot for this whole place that's because the climate is very harsh there it's very cold so not a lot of stuff grows there so also not a lot of people will live there so yeah those are like the two main areas in terms of like world population distribution so just need to know that at first and then yeah okay so those things that i basically just mentioned about like people living at certain places because of certain reasons you could call them abiotic factors there's abiotic factors and there's bi biotic factors abiotic factors are basically like um, non-living factors like water like the availability of water the soil being fertile those are abiotic factors and then there's biotic factors which has to do with stuff like trade and communication Whereas a person would choose to go live in maybe China because they've got like fast internet there. Um, they have um, their technology system is advanced. That would be a biotic factor. But if you're looking at stuff like water availability, that is an abiotic factor. So you need to know those two different factors and understand them because they could ask a question, maybe just like give you a map and be like, why did person X choose to go live there? And you'd be like, no, because of the abiotic factors such as soil fertility and all that stuff. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And then another um, definition that, that, sort of, that has to do with this 
<laughs> my, my words are going away, I'm so sorry. That has to do with this topic is population density. Um, okay, population density basically refers to the number of people that are living in a square kilometer of land. So, yeah, in a square kilometer of land, if there is, for example, maybe a thousand people compared to another square kilometer of land that has 50 people, the one with a thousand people will obviously have a higher population density because there are more people living there per square kilometer. Yeah. Okay, and then now we, we're taking it back, we're bringing it home in South Africa. If you notice how Deng is the, the smallest province, but it has the largest population density in South Africa, whereas Northern Cape is the largest province, but it has the smallest population density. Have you ever asked yourself why? If you have, or if you haven't, the reason is because in Gauteng, there are a lot of abiotic factors and i will mention one for example um the mines that is the major major reason why Gauteng is what it is because there were a lot of gold gold mines that were discovered there and then apart like just apart from that um uh, Gauteng has um first house soil obviously not as fertile as like your limpopo your, your kids at in your yeah but it has a lot of um fertile soil and they could plant a whole lot of maize there so yeah those are all those factors and they just contributed to Gauteng developing and being what it is and then now we have biotic factors that is the reason why there's a lot of people in Gauteng and those biotic factors would be employment. There's a lot of job opportunities employed in, in Gauteng. There are a lot of good schools in Gauteng. So just always think of it like that. Always ask yourself, why do a lot of people live there? It's because of all those factors. Whereas in the Northern Cape, the Northern Cape is very dry. The winters are extremely cold, there's frost there, so that's why a lot of people don't choose to live there. And also, although the Northern Cape has Kimberley, which had like a whole lot of like diamonds, they're not there basically anymore as much because they basically dug them out. So there isn't much happening there. The economy isn't booming. So that would be another biotic factor that kind of like moved people away from the Northern Cape. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're gonna do this activity. Uh, let me try and zoom it in, and guys, so everyone can read. Okay, it says the first question: Explain the difference between dispersed settlement and clustered settlement. Basically, a dispersed settlement is where like the people sort of live like far apart from each other, and then clustered settlement is that they are close to each other i sort of like made this quick drawing <laughs> yeah so the first one would be a cluster settlement the people are close to each other and then the second one would be a uh, dispersed because the people are far apart from each other so that's just the difference between the two and then what is define what is meant by population density as i said earlier population density is basically the number of people living in a square kilometer of land so that's population density oh i skipped question two what is a non ecumene area we're gonna go back to our diagram uh, okay a non ecumene areas is those gray areas that don't have a lot of dots basically yeah the areas that are just harsh and not really great for human population that will be your EQ mean areas. And I'm so sorry that you guys can't see me and you're just like speaking to a wall. But okay, we're back now. Um, give two abiotic factors that discourage human settlement. Harsh climate. Um, harsh climate, dry soil. Yeah, like land that is steep. Yeah, all of those things. They, they really discourage human settlement. And then the fifth one, what abiotic factors are responsible for the dense population along the Nile River? Well, if you know um, the Nile River along there, it's very, very, very fertile. So that 
is the reason why a lot of people chose to live there so farming is booming on that side so yeah you could say um fertile soil is an abiotic factor that is the reason for the dense population another reason you can say it's flat yeah it's very flat there that's another reason why people chose to live there and the climate isn't too hot or too cold so yeah it's 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 just fair so that would be the reason why people chose to live there so yes <laughs> That is basically it for today. That is our first deck section. Population, distribution, and density. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's, I think it's easy, it's still chilled. It's still about to, you know, the levels are about to go up. But yeah, if you have any questions, please drop them and please like, subscribe, share, tell everybody. And thank you so much for tuning in.